Good afternoon and thanks for joining us today. My name is Aaron Chafee. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for the Western US for Artex Tile and Stone Installation Systems. I'm joined today by a couple of colleagues, Mark Penine, who's joining us from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Mark is our manager of technical uh, for all of our tile and stone installation products. Welcome, Mark. Additionally, we have William White, who's our field marketing specialist out on uh, the West Coast. We have Kristen Blanchard, who's joining us remotely. Kristen will be manning the question and answer uh, bar for this presentation today, so feel free to type your questions reach out to uh, Kristen. Kristen will moderate that area and bring your questions to the front of the class for us. And we have Ryan Willoughby also who is helping us today as we proceed. So we will turn it over to William White. Hi everyone, my name is William White. I am the field marketing specialist for the Western US. Wanted to start out today. This is series two or part two of our series. So I wanted to give a, re a recap or a review of where we were at yesterday. So yesterday we created this shower base. So we started with a concrete substrate. In this application, we actually have a wood structure. So we used a piece of cement backer unit. Then we did our pre-slope with our AM100. We waterproofed it in this situation with Artex 8 plus 9, which is available in the white. We used the SK mesh at the drain and at the change of plane in the corner. Now we do have three different waterproofing options, S1K, 8 plus 9, and SK175. It gives you a good, better, and best options, both in price and performance for your waterproofing needs. Once our waterproofing was dry, then we actually have our A38 as our final slope to our two-piece clamping drain. So that's just a, a quick review of where we were at yesterday. And so today is our part two of our shower systems where we're actually going to be installing tile and then grouting it using Artex High Performance products. At this point, we'll turn it over to Mark who has a very brief presentation for us. Thanks, William. So like William said, we're going to discuss some Artex mortars that would be typically used in a shower installation, um, as well as uh, some Artex grout options we have and our silicone to finish. Okay, let's first talk about Artex X5. X5 is the workhorse out of our mortars. It's our number one selling product. Um, it's ideal for large and heavy towel and stone. It's got excellent sag resistance. It's super smooth and creamy, very easy to trowel. It can be used both inter interior as well as exterior. And it's approved for both on top and below uncoupling membranes. X5 comes in both gray and white, and it gets outstanding coverage, approximately 90 square feet out of a 40 pound bag. Another option is Artex X7R, which is our rapid setting town stone mortar. This product also has great sag resistance and also can be used interior as well as exterior as well as in swimming pools. It's free, uh, perfect for freestyle conditions. It can be walked on and grotted in as little as three hours. X7R is our go-to product for fast track commercial work. You're gonna get approximately 85 square feet out of a 40 pound bag. And this product also comes in gray and white. If you're doing a tub area, you could actually use Artex 8 plus 9 waterproofing. You can install your towel with X7R. You can grout with Artex FL and treat your joints in corners with SX. And that shower or tub area can be ready for use the next day. Let's take a look at micro technology 
and what microtechnology does to uh, enhance the performance of a mortar. So as an example on your far left, that would be an example of a non-modified mortar with a standard binding matrix. It has very limited in, it's very limited in its performance. And then the next one on the right is a polymer modified example. Well, this is gonna give increased flexibility. It's gonna improve freeze thaw resistance. It's gonna give a stronger bond. It's gonna allow that mortar to bond to plywood and porcelain tile, which an unmodified product cannot do. But then when you go a little further, into microtechnology, you're combining those two with these tiny microfibers. And that's going to further enhance the mortar's capability. It's going to give it longer open times, great sag resistance, flexibility, and great ease of use. So let's take a look at a product with microtechnology. Artex X77 Microtech. This is the most advanced and versatile talent stone mortar in the industry. It has unmatched sag resistance. It's the only product on the market that can truly say it has a 60 minute open time. That is especially important when installing gauge porcelain tiles and panels. Those tiles are so large they require to have the mortar trout on the substrate as well as the back of the tile. It could take up to 30 minutes to install one tile. You have to have a mortar that has a long open time and Artex X77 is that product. Also, because we removed some of the sand from the product and added the fibers, we're getting more volume of material in a 40 pound bag. That's gonna equate to greater square, co square coverage by the bag. We're going to get 110 square feet coverage out of this 40 pound bag of Artix X77. Artix X77 also has a three hour pot life. It can be used to install ceramic and porcelain tile in swimming pools as well. We also can add our additive Artex E90 to X77 to install glass towel on the splash line around swimming pools. So Artex X77 is absolutely the most advanced and versatile towel mortar in the industry. So let's take a look at our demonstration with William. So what we have here is we have a two wall shower installation and the designer selected a very thin mosaic glass blend. And so what we're going to do with our installation is we're actually going to start at our mosaic line, which is at our eye line, and make sure that it's perfectly level. Now, with a super thin product, and we're going up against, you know, a standard thickness, tile, you'll notice that we have quite a difference in thickness. So what we've done in this application is we've actually bonded our tile to Artex SK175 waterproofing. And what that does is it gives us a rigid piece that now we can install as one unit. So for this application, we actually are using Artex X77, which has that unique proprietary blend of polymers and fibers that are going to allow us to start at the top and work down. Chris, how are we doing with any questions so far? 
questions yet, William. All right. So you'll notice that I am keying in our substrate to make sure that we get a positive bond to the substrate. And then I am directionally troweling so that I'm combing in a single direction, just using best practices. So I'm going to go ahead and take my mosaic, add just a little bit of thin set to the back side of it. So now I can position that mosaic, get it adjusted. If I wanted to, I could check it with my level. And we know that that is perfectly level at our eye line, and now we'll actually be able to work down. Ryan, would you mind back buttering some tiles for me? Yeah. So now our next tile is going to start at our decker line, and we're going to move down. So some of the unique advantages to Artix X77 is it does have up to an hour open time. So as I've combed out this wall, let's say I had a shower valve cut right here and I had to run down and my saw was set up downstairs or a floor down in the garage or whatever. I don't have to worry about this thin set skinning off and drying. pot life. We also have a three hour pot life, which is amazing. Gives us lots of time to work with the material. So now I'm just going through and throwing our spacers back in, but you'll notice that that deco line has stayed right where we originally positioned it. There's some wedges right there. Would you mind handing me one or two wedges, Ryan? I'm just gonna put a little wedge right in this corner. Thank you, sir. It's just a little tiny wedge to hold that guy. And now we know that we're perfectly level around and we can start our second wall.
So you'll notice the trowel I'm using is the DTA Tiger trowel. So this is an improved in heat, uh, improved adhesion trowel that actually helps us achieve a better bond to the back of our tile. So once I've fully keyed in the substrate, and notice the hang that that X77 has to it. I can put out large you know, amounts of material out there and it doesn't slide down the wall. So again, we have our piece of mosaic that we mounted to that Artex S1, sorry, SK75 fabric. Now you'll notice another advantage of doing this method is we didn't get any thin sets squeezing through. Sometimes when you set mosaic tile, as you press it in, that thin set likes to squeeze through. Well, we don't have that concern here because the fabric, so we set these pieces yesterday and let them dry overnight, and then we just cut to length today. So I'm just keying in the back of our mosaic strip so that we get a really good bond. Now when I go to install it, just installs as one giant piece. See how I can adjust it. It's not sliding down the wall. It's staying perfectly level. If I wanted to, I could come in here and check it with my level. You know, Aaron, can you show that right there? So we are perfectly level with our bubble and that mosaic we know now is dead level and we can work down from there. So again, Ryan has already back trialed our pieces. We just do that to make sure that we're achieving proper coverage. Looks like our substrate has a little bit of deflection in it today, <laughs> probably because it's a temporary wall. Christian, any any questions so far on our installation? No questions. No questions. 
All right. Hey, I'll be back, back, back. However, it looks like it's more of a price question, so I'll address that privately. Got a little out of sequence with our tiles there. simply go through, throw our spacers in. Now I am leaving a gap here at our change of plane because in accordance with our TCNA handbook, we would want that to be filled with a flexible sealant. So as we go into our grouting section, which we'll go into next, we always want to leave a nice joint there open at our change of plane that we can then fill with our silicone. So that's our tiled installation. You can see that that deco hasn't moved stayed perfectly level, makes a nice easy installation when you're stacking walls with the Artix X77. If we don't have any questions, Mark, I'll turn it back to you for the grout portion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Artix has three high performance grot options for your installations. The first product we're going to discuss is the Artex FH. Can you switch this slide, please? Thank you. So FH is a great standard set cement based sanded floor and wall grout. Grout joints from a sixteenth all the way up to three quarters of an inch. It's open to traffic the next day. Interior as well as exterior. It's actually perfect for grouting stone veneer installations where the joints will change in size anywhere from an eighth all the way up to three quarters of an inch. FH has a long two hour working time, which makes it nice to work with, especially outside in the elements. And it comes in 30 Artex color choices. It's available in both the 10 pound box as well as the 25 pound bag. For projects where you need an unsanded grout, and there's not too many unsanded grout options today. Unsanded grouts were very popular in the 80s and 90s, but now with more porcelain tile, we're into um, using more sanded products. But for those installations, maybe it's a marble installation, maybe it's a glass tile installation, or still a ceramic tile installation, the Artex FGC Microtex unsanded grout is great for these type of applications. You can use it from a sixteenth of an inch up to a quarter of an inch for ceramic towel and up to an eighth of an inch for porcelain towel. It's a very hard and dense product. It can be open to traffic in four hours. It has excellent color consistency. 
and it's available in 35 Artex colors. It comes in also a 10 pound box as well as a 25 pound bag. The next product is our Artex FL. Can you switch the slide, please? Thank you. FL is a rapid set, flexible sanded grout. It has a very fine spherical sand that gives a very smooth finish to the texture of the product when it's installed. It's rapid setting. It allows foot traffic in 90 minutes. It does not require sealing. It installs from a 16th of an inch up to a half of an inch. Interior as well as exterior. Perfect for pools and other submerged applications. And it also comes in a 10 pound and 25 pound offering. The Arctic Sec FL has a very unique creamy consistency that's unlike a lot of grouts in the industry. William will be demonstrating it in a little bit and you'll see that different consistency that I'm talking about. For those pro projects that you need an epoxy, Artex has Artex WA epoxy grout and adhesive. It's a two component epoxy. It's good for all types of tile. It's water and frost resistant. It has a long 60 minute working time. It's also an adhesive for very difficult bonding situations. We actually recommend it for installing glass towel in swimming pools. Also, if you have a metal substrate like an elevator, we recommend installing towels to an elevator floor with Artex WA. WA also comes in all 35 Artex color choices. It's absolutely the easiest epoxy on the market to install as well as clean. You only need to use clean cold water to clean off your grot. You do not need additives, hot water, acids, anything like that. Just clean cold water. It comes in a nine pail container, two components like I said. You scoop the lid, which is the hardener and the pigment into the pail, which is the resin, and you mix right in that, that pail that the product comes in. For finishing our installations, like William said, we always want to treat our change of plane and our corners with a flexible silicone. The product we recommend is Artex SX 100% silicone caulk and sealant. It's quick curing, it's UV stable, mold and mildew resistant, interior as well as exterior applications, perfect for swimming pools and other wet areas. This product comes in all 35 Artex grout colors plus clear. And let's go back to William for a grout demonstration. All right, guys, so here we have a typical three wall kind of shower installation. We've got a mosaic on the floor. We've got this kind of handcrafted um, tile on the walls. So you'll notice that we've already pre-treated our inside corners. So what I did those with was Artex SX sealant. Now, the reason why I, I did that before I grouted, the number one complaint, well, the number two complaint that I get about silicone, number one is it's hard to work with, but I've got some tricks that I'd like to show you on that one to make it easier for everybody. But the number two complaint I get is that it's shiny. Now, if I grouted everything, let it dry, and came in here and did my silicone as the very last thing I did, then it is a bright, shiny line. And typically our grout is not shiny, it's a matte product. And so 
what my trick is, is when we set the last piece of tile yesterday, we went ahead and did all of our sealant. Now, when we go to grout, what that's going to do is the little bit of sand or aggregate in the grout is going to buff across that silicone and take the shine away. So right here, we have the three grouts that we're going to be installing today. Artex FGC, Artex FL, and Artex WA. So do we have any questions so far from our grout and or our wall installation? Not yet, William. OK, huh? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the epoxy grout because that's where people normally, you know, when I'm in front of a bunch of contractors and I ask who likes epoxy grout, I, no one hardly ever raises their hand because typically people don't like epoxy grout. But as Mark already stated, Artex WA, it's, it's like the easiest epoxy grout that I've ever encountered. So I'm going to go through the installation, the mixing and installation. So you'll notice we have two units. Now these will come in a cardboard box and the color and hardener in the top, the sand and the resin are in the bottom. So mixing is just as easy as Mark said. We're simply going to pop open the top. So we've got our sand and our, our sorry, our color and hardener are in the top. So we're just going to scrape that right into the bottom. Now, Artex WA is a true 100% solids epoxy grout. Being that it's a true 100% solids, it is different than other epoxy grouts out there, the modified emulsions and waterborne epoxies and those, those type, because 100% solids epoxy is going to provide the maximum in stain and chemical resistance. So once I've dumped the top into the bottom, I'm going to use the Artex T2 Mini Mixer. And what I like about the T2 Mini is it goes on a cordless drill and allows mixing. Now, Yes, this is an epoxy grout that I'm going to be mixing with a cordless drill. So does anyone know why, you know, typically it's not recommended to mix epoxy grout with a drill? So once I've mixed our WA, that's the biggest difference with our epoxy grout. Straight out of the bucket, you'll notice that it doesn't have any slump or any sag to it. Normal epoxy grouts, this would be running down and dripping off my hand. This is a huge advantage for the Artix WA, especially when we go to do a wall installation, which is what we're going to do here. So I do have my DTA epoxy grout float. Now epoxy grout floats are typically a little bit harder rubber. And what that's gonna do is, when I go to grout, I can actually clean it off the edges of the tile just a little bit easier. So a trick with epoxy is in this container, this is going to start generating heat. We've started a thermochemical reaction when we put our hardener into the resin. 
Now the trick with epoxy grout is if you get it out of that container, it's going to last longer and give you that entire one hour pot life. So my recommendation is to simply take some dollops and stick them to the wall because you'll notice they just hang there. They don't even sag down the wall. And that way I can maintain that one hour pot life. So with some epoxy grouts, I have seen where people will grout like around the edges of the tile. At Ardex, we don't recommend that. We actually recommend that you apply grout over the entire surface. And then squeegee it off. So we decided to use the Artix WA on the wall because that is one of the complaints that we get about epoxy grouts is that they they sag and they're difficult to use on wall applications. William, we have a question on the WA. Is it only a grout? Ah, that's a really good question. So Mark mentioned in the presentation portion. Ryan, would you mind? Um, Mark mentioned in the presentation portion that Artix WA can also be used as, as an adhesive in a difficult to bond to, bond to situation. So his example was to stick tiles in like say an elevator where they typically have a metal floor. So that's a challenging installation there. An Artex WA can be used there. Also in submerged glass tile installations or even steam rooms, because what happens is moisture can get back behind the tile if it's a glass tile and discolor that mortar. But if you have an epoxy adhesive, which is our Artex WA, and I would recommend using the Brilliant White in that application. So what that's going to do is that that will never discolor, and also glass tile can be very difficult to bond to because it's impervious, right? So in a submerged application, you're going to get a good bond, and you won't get any discoloring of the mortar or adhesive as it begins to get wet behind the tile. It's a great question. Do you have any other questions coming through? No, sir. no sir. All right. So now we're going to go into our high performance cement based grouts. So I like, I love both Artix FL and FGC. We're going to do the FL on the floor application, and we're going to do the FGC in these little bit finer joints. Now it used to be that with standard grouts, an eighth inch and smaller was non-sanded and an eighth inch and larger was sanded. Nowadays that's changed a little bit with these high performance 118.7 grouts because now you actually end up with a non-sanded like 
well, in this case, Artix FGC can go up to a quarter of an inch and our FL can go down to a 16th. So from a half down to a 16th. So we have a lot of um, ability to adjust our grout joints and what grout goes in. I really like the Artix FGC. <coughs> now, here I've already got our water and our powder pre moistened. Can you get the drill, please? Thank you, sir. So it's pre portioned. It's a three to one ratio with the Artix FGC. So we're going to put our water in, dump our powder in. Again, I'm using my Artix T2 Mini. I'll go ahead and switch it to high speed. So for my FGC installation, I actually like to use, here I have the, uh, the DTA gum rubber float. This is a really nice soft float. I really like this for my FGC installation. So you'll notice that when I mixed up the grout, I did not slake it. So with Artex products, we do not require slaking of any of our materials, whether it's our thin sets, our grouts, we do not require slaking of those materials. So I'm able to mix it and immediately put it into use. So you'll notice that I, I switched my gear, my drill into high gear, high speed, Artex products do like higher speeds to activate those polymers. And what that does is it eliminates that need for the slake time. And that can actually save you a lot of time on a job, not having to slake every bucket of mud. Well, you why you are you two questions, questions for you. How All long right. does WA sit on the substrate before you can clean it? So our recommendation is all of our grouts, we're going to allow them to dwell on the surface. We don't immediately start washing this. We're going to actually let it set up a little bit. And the reason we do that with Artex grouts is so that we don't wash away our grouts and, and overwash those joints. We want to have nice full grout joints and that's what we'll get. So here we're going to wait and actually that epoxy grout is going to be the last thing we clean. So we recommend waiting 20 to 30 minutes. Um, here we're going to we're going to wait and see how long we have. We'll probably that's actually that's Thank you, William. Uh, Adam, Adam Murray asked if you had any tips to avoid sheet lines with free bonding mosaic to SK-125. You were breaking up, Kristen. Could you give us a question once more? Yeah, Adam Murray asked if you had any tricks for avoiding sheet lines when pre bonding mosaic to SK-175. So that is the advantage when we're pre bonding them and, and we're doing that layout the day before is that we can actually you know use our utility knife cut spread you know 
just the mesh that's holding the, the mosaic together so that we can spread those out so that you don't get those real solid sheet lines between them. And so we can adjust it and let it dry in a flat orientation. Then when we go to install it, it's all continuous as one piece. And if you've set it flat without the sheet lines, you're not going to get them when you go to install your wall. And I still owe Mr. Adam Murray a sticker for his brand new truck. I'll have to get that to him pretty soon. So there goes our installation of FGC on the wall. So now we're going to switch to the Artex FL. FL is a high performance grout. I'll tell you what, I think I'm just going to mix it right here in this smaller cup. Well, so you'll notice I'm actually putting my powder in first. Typically that would be a no-no, but I want to show you a unique characteristic of the Artex FL grout. Do you guys see what that water is doing? So it's not soaking in, it's actually sitting on top of the, of the grout. So the grout itself is hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means scared of water. So now when we go to mix it, you'll notice at first it looks really clumpy and kind of weird for grout. That's because that water actually requires that speed and just keep mixing for that two to three minutes required for our grout. So you'll notice that my, my FL grout is very fluid, FL fluid grout. When mixed properly, so we do have a, a little bit of a ratio, so we can adjust that water up or down a little bit as long as we stay within the range given. So like on a 10 pound box, that's 28 to 32 ounces of water. So four ounces difference is gonna make a difference between at the low side, 28, what we use for a wall, versus the 32 is going to give us that horrible consistency. It should pour out of the bucket because FL grout being as fluid as it is, you know, typically grout is mixed kind of like peanut butter and you have to smash it down into all those grout joints. But here, and you'll notice what those grout joints do. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but they, they actually swell up just a little tiny bit because that grout is flowing in and filling from the bottom up. William, Greg Meyer has a great question while you're doing that. Can I add more water if the grout starts to stiffen up while I'm working with it? Ah, uh, so with with any Artex product, we don't ever want to add more water to it, but we can remix it and and retemper that material as long as we don't add any additional water.
So as you can see, the grouting just goes really easy. I do like to clean off that surface really well, but I tell you what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave this section over here just a little bit messier. And you'll see that even though we're gonna wait before we, we wash this off the surface, even if we leave it on there a little bit thicker, that's still gonna wash off very, very easy. So while we let our, our while we let our grout dwell, what I'm going to do is show you uh, a SX installation using a typical three wall installation so so that we deal with the corner. And as we're talking about silicone versus acrylic, you know, here's a really good demonstration of silicone versus acrylic. So this is a piece of silicone dried this is a piece of acrylic like sanded caulk and what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to pull on these two pieces and watch what happens so the the acrylic broke and the silicone goes that much farther here i'll do that again for you so again silicone on the top acrylic on the bottom and we're simply going to pull on them See that and the silicone keeps going until it breaks so you see how much more elongation how much more stretch silicone has to it so here's another really good example of how much flex you know if you look at that from the end how much flex that has that's why silicone is the best product to use at our change of plane because if there's any movement it's not going to crack out it's not going to shrink like grout or an acrylic or sanded caulk will shrink and crack. But the number one complaint is how to do it easily and well. So a couple little things about our tube. Our tubes actually come with this little cap. That's pretty handy. Also, the tips are removable. So if this does happen to harden up in there, you can just simply use the wire and clean out that tip. Another huge advantage is that hole is already cut because the number one rule of silicone is don't get silicone where you don't want silicone. So the beauty of being able to put that cap back on there is now I don't have to worry about that leaking out. So there are a lot of different ways to clean this up. I've seen everything from, you know, shaping a carpenter's pencil or a popsicle stick. You know, there are these caulking tools. And I've seen a lot of different things used, but I find that spray glass cleaner, it has to be the aerosol kind that sprays out, makes cleaning up silicone super easy. So I just get some of that glass cleaner all over my silicone tool and I'll start right here in this inside corner and just drag that out. So I'm just wiping that off. Now, if I need a little bit of touch up in that corner, what I like to do is just spray my finger with some glass cleaner, come in here. I can just do a nice little bit of touch up in that corner 
fix it, make it look all pretty. So silicone really doesn't have to be difficult. If, if you simply use, you know, a couple little tips and tricks for doing silicone, the beauty of it is you're not going to have any callbacks. You know, even if you're doing a backsplash and, uh, and all you're doing is, is just installing tile on a backsplash and that it always cracks out between the counter and the tile. If you use silicone, 100% silicone in that application, you're not going to have callbacks, you know, a year or six months later when things have settled and that joint has cracked out. Chris, do we have any questions so far? Not right now. You've done great. So we're a little early here on our on our WA epoxy grout, but I tell you what, I am going to get started on cleaning up my FGC. Got those guys. So one thing I want to point out, Aaron, if you can just shine down here for a second. So my grout sponge. So notice how well I'm bringing that out. So we're damp. We're only damp with our sponge. We don't want our sponge with a lot of water in it. Now when we go to clean our wall, I just go through, kind of pre-moisten everything. Now, the reason why I want my sponge pretty dry is I don't want to be just like remixing the grout. I don't want to be introducing a lot of water into it at this point because here we have white grout, but if you had a darker grout with some pigment or something like that, you don't want to wash away that pigment and excess water can do that. So now, once I've kind of done my dirty wash across the entire surface, now I'm going through and I'm kind of just tooling those grout joints. Because I waited and didn't wash immediately, what happens is now as I wash across them, notice they're staying nice and full. And I'm able to actually work them down and press my grout joints and make them look really nice, full and keep them clean. Now as I come across to do my final clean,
could you hand me the microphone for a sec? So one thing I like to do is as I get to this point, now I can simply take a microfiber across there. And you can see if you, Aaron, if you get close to those joints, we end up with nice, full, smooth, beautiful, non-sanded grout joints. So do you think we should jump into this epoxy grout? Nah, we're actually gonna go ahead and clean up our, our FL grout first. So again, very dry sponge. You guys see that? So just for the sake of time, we are a little bit early on this. Now I would highly recommend waiting that 20 to 30 minutes because it is going to make it a lot easier to maintain full grout joints if you wait that prescribed amount of time. So even over here where I left that grout super heavy, notice that it just wipes right off. Now when I go to do my final clean, You know, if you did happen to have a little pinhole or something like that, just take a little bit of grout, touch it in there, wipe her away. A couple of comments about that special sponge you're using. <laughs> the Ardex grout sponge. Now, this absolutely is my favorite sponge for everything. In fact, my wife steals this from me because she loves it for around the house. So now you'll notice that I grabbed a microfiber cloth. So the Arctic sponge compared to a regular sponge is like a microfiber compared to a regular rag. This is gonna clean just a little bit better. Also having these square edges allows me to get in nice and square because we're typically dealing with square joints. So I can get right nice tight into those square joints where a rounded edge sponge isn't going to do that. So the Arctic sponges really are better, they last longer, and they make your job just easier when it comes to grouting. So we're going to go ahead and jump into, go ahead, any other questions? We have a question from Mike Shapiro here. Is FL grout recommended for walls? Absolutely. So FL grout, again, we had that water ratio. So for a 10 pound box, 28 to 32 ounces of water. On the high side, we're going to get something flowable like we had here for the floor. But if I went to the low side of that water ratio, we're actually going to get something that's a little thicker and stickier. Again, we do want to stay within that water range prescribed by Ardex. So when it is a little bit thicker, thicker, it is going to stick and apply on wall applications just fine. So both FL, FGC and WA can be used on floors or walls. Any other questions before I dive into the Artex WA? Because I actually really want to wait and let this let this dry up nice for you guys. Well, just because you asked, William, we do have two questions. Uh, one, right. anonymous, can FGC be used outside? Absolutely, Artex. All of these grouts can be used interior, exterior, commercial, and residential. Thank you. Also. Could you speak to the level of stain resistance NFL if it's not required for sealing? Right, so how that works is Ardex FL grout and FGC grout, while they are a, a 118.7, that high performance standard for grout, the FL being fluid flows in there and actually creates a denser cement matrix. Now, the calcium alumina cement that's in it, what that does is it actually retains that water 
locking it into the matrix of the grout, creating a denser, stronger, harder grout. And remember when I mixed it up, it was um, hydrophobic. The water didn't immediately soak into the grout. Once this grout is cured out, it's going to have those same attributes that the water isn't going to soak into it. So while it isn't required to seal, if you were going over something like a slate or a natural stone that you're going to seal anyway, FL and FGC will accept a, a sealer, a penetrating sealer. So you can seal it, or if you have a light color in an entryway out in the country or something like that, absolutely it'll make cleanup and maintenance a little easier, but it is not required. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, William. Uh, how much longer do the Arctic sponges last over traditional rounded sponges? <laughs> <laughs> I would say easily twice to three times as long. In my experience. Thank you. Also, what is the compressive strength of both Arctic FL and FGC? So the Arctic FL grout actually is over 8000 PSI compressive strength once fully cured with a 28 day cure. Now the FGC grout here on our wall is over 10,000 PSI. So both of these grouts are incredibly strong, incredibly robust materials that you can really put into service. You know, that's the beauty of FL grout. We can return it to service in as little as 90 minutes. So this is a rapid curing grout, but notice I have plenty of time to tool it and work it. I'm not rushing to get my joints all nice. So we have plenty of time to work with it, but it does cure rapidly and that allows us to return it to service quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get into our WA. Now there are a couple things that I want to point out when we're talking about the WA epoxy grout. The first thing that we're going to need is a Scotch-Brite pad. Now here I have a couple different examples of them. These ones come mounted to the handle. They're, they're kind of handy. This here is a Scotch-Brite that just sticks onto a handle. The same, the same thing here, this just sticks on. Why I like to use, I could use the scotch right just by itself, but why I like to use the handle is because as I'm cleaning and water is going to be our friend, so we're going to use lots of water. As I'm cleaning, the handle allows me to apply even pressure so that I don't dish out my grout joints. So the Scotch-Brite is required. If I immediately started cleaning with a sponge, that's not going to work very well and I'm not going to be very happy um, because it's just going to ball up and gum up on the sponge. The sponge is just going to be a collector. It's just going to wipe our surface clean. All the heavy work is actually done by our doodle bug or our Scotch-Brite pad. Now when I go to clean with my sponge, no special additives. We're just using clear, clean, potable water. So guys, that's that's epoxy grout. Can you see how easy this is cleaning off the surface? So 
So again, the advantages of an epoxy grout being 100% solids like Artex WA is that this is going to provide you the maximum in stain and chemical resistance. One more rinse. Thank you, sir. So I do recommend letting this firm up. Um, me personally, I like to come back in about 20 minutes with a fresh bucket of water. No doodle bug. Now I just use my Artex sponge and I like to do a second clean on everything. At that point, my grout joint is nice and firm. I can really scrub on it, but you'll notice all these grout joints look absolutely amazing. And that's epoxy grout. It can be just that easy. So we'll open it up for any final questions that we have. I think we're right about up to our window of time. Chris, how are we doing with questions? Well, we're at this moment, we're good. Okay. I come in now. All righty. Well, that being said, we've basically come up to the end of our presentation for today and this two-part series on Artex shower systems. Uh, just as a quick refresher, as I pan, we talked about our waterproofing with S1K, 8 plus 9, and SK175. We talked about pre-sloping with AM100. Again, here we show SK mesh used to tie into our drain with A plus nine white. And then we showed packing a pan with A38. One other item that we talked about yesterday, just for review, is AM100. This is the mock-up that we made yesterday showing AM100 from thick to thin on a floor application and from thin to thick on a wall application with, no, with slump. no slump. Nice and smooth, nice and flat across the top, held place very nice, ready for waterproofing, or you could tile directly over it if you didn't need waterproofing in that application. Lastly, we'll show our installation today here with X77. We talked about SK175 for pre-mounting glass mosaics. And you can see that everything is held still. It's installed very quickly and nice. Now we'll clean this up. We'll offer the opportunity for people to see this on social media later on after we're all cleaned up here. Uh, but we used FGC on this wall. We'll finish cleaning that up once we wrap up. We did WA on this wall and you'll notice we didn't have that honey effect like a lot of other epoxies where it comes out of the joint. And then also, on the floor, we have also, Aaron, FL. It's also not sticky. As I touch this, you would hear if my glove was sticking to it. There's there's no residue. That's an amazing thing to point out because when I've done epoxy grout in the past, it's always been sticky and there's like this sticky on my gloves, on my tools. I, there's no sticky on anything. That's a very good point. And lastly, we had the FL grout here on the floor. And uh, like we talked about, not just a floor grout, mixed to two different consistencies, whether you're doing floor or wall. Um, and as we wrap up here, we'll show you our color fan. We have 35 colors available. in all three of these grouts. So this grout selector works for all three of these grouts. And our silicones. And the silicone that so, also comes in clear. Yep. So that wraps our presentation for today. Mark Penine, William White, Ryan Willoughby, and Chris Blanchard, thank you for your work today to make this possible.